Brock University is an incredible campus, but it's more than just classrooms. There's all kinds of facilities in these hallways that most students don't even know exist. This year, our cameras gain exclusive access to these areas to show you what really goes on at Brock University. You're watching Brock TV, and this is Behind Closed Doors. All right, so I'm here with Ryan Thiessen. He's a machinist at the Faculty of Math and Science Technical Services Department. So Ryan, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you do here and what we're going to see today? So mostly what we do is we build and maintain uh, equipment for the math and sciences. Often we get a professor come into us with an idea and we need to turn it into a working piece of equipment to do where they can do experiments. We also maintain a lot of the scientific equipment here such as the liquid nitrogen machine, sterilizers, vacuum pumps, and anything else you'd find in a lab. Okay, sounds really cool. Let's go check it out. All right. So we get anywhere from people bringing us ideas written on napkins that aren't going to work, and we have to turn them into something that will, yeah. um, to very complex drawings where they've really thought it out. Often they won't know what different materials are good for, but they'll come to us and say, I need a material that can do this, 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 and this. And then it's our job to know what that material is or to go out and find it. Is this kind of a unique facility amongst Ontario universities? or um, universities They used to be have? more common, having machine shops in universities. They're not as common anymore. But it Definitely. is nice that our campus still has It is own. very handy, and a lot of professors really appreciate the facility. Um, we have the experience and uh, within our community here to be able to interface with professors and students in a way that industry doesn't because we deal with it all the time and so they can come to us even though they may not understand everything we understand them. And what kind of skills or you know traits in, in skills would you need to kind of specialize in this type of work? You need a really good mechanical aptitude to be able to take a look at a piece of equipment and basically understand it, knowing your math, and how materials interact with each other. All right, so what are we looking at here? Over here we have our uh, CNC mill. Today we're just drilling holes. These blocks are uh, for the pool here, and uh, they go along the edge of the pool. But what we have here are a bunch of different codes that we know that we can tell the machine, and each different code will do something different. But we have this code says S, 1250, yep. so that's just speed, 1250 RPM. Oh, okay. It kind of reminds me of a computer script or, you know, it's those exactly old RPG like computer, games. It's exactly like yeah. computer programming, yeah. um, just with a much simpler language. Mm -hmm. So we're okay. mid-program, so all I have to do is uh, start it. It's going to drill 230 holes all by itself. And you can see it, it pecks, it takes little chips, uh, that's so that the long plastic chip doesn't get this long. And it does that all on its own. Is there still an element of design in the, in the pieces that you make? Like, do you still think about how it's going to look and how it's Absolutely. going to... Absolutely. We're not interior designers, right. but... Uh, but I imagine what it, it is a bit of a mix between a skill and an art. It is, design. yeah. I mean, you can rely on just a skill. But if you want people to pay attention to your work, mm. it needs to sort of, as a whole unit, look good. and. So on this machine, we're making uh, just little feet for the grape tissue freeze trays. These trays go in a freezer, and they stack several of them high, and they're able to, uh, what they're looking for is information on when the grape buds freeze. So just like uh, on that machine, we have the same kinds of codes, and most of the codes actually overlap from one machine to the other. So it quite simply then comes out looking like this. It's kind of all burred up. Those, it would also be less bird if we were using coolant. Right. So we call this room oh. the, the crib. The crib. And uh, well, it's a common name for, for rooms in shops where you keep all your little pieces. People come in and they say, I need this screw, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, we, have, we so, do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so it's our job to take that screw, figure out what it was. Yeah. These are some of the uh, measuring instruments that we use to uh, check our sizes. Because it's one thing to actually machine something, it's another thing to make sure you got the size you want. And this work is coming down to 
to the, the thousandths of an inch or wow. smaller. So your hair is about five thousandths of an inch. So we can work to one fiftieth of that wow. if need be. That's really small. <laughs> that is very small. Very I, can't, I can't show you how small yeah, yeah. it is because it's too small to see. So this is uh, where we do a lot of sheet metal work, welding. Sometimes if the piece of equipment is bigger, we'll bring it down here. If we start over here, um, we have a tube bender. So that just simply takes round tube and it makes nice bends out of it. So this here is the liquid nitrogen room. So that's the old uh, liquid nitrogen machine. Uh, a number of years ago, it was replaced with this newer one. This services virtually the entire science department. Everyone is using it, from Covey all the way to uh, chemistry uh, and Cairns and everywhere. Can you explain how you actually make liquid nitrogen? Or this unit takes air from the room and it compresses it. That air is then fed into two columns in that machine. What that does is it separates out the, the different compounds. From there, then it sends the, only the nitrogen uh, out to this machine. And this machine's job is just to uh, basically compress it down into this tank. And uh, there you have it. And there you have it. And then you have liquid nitrogen. What I can do, if you'd like, I can take you to one of the labs where that big piece of equipment we made actually is. And it's a good example of, of everything that we do here in okay, one perfect. thing. So we made this whole box. But we made, like, I made this part down here. So this is the kind of stuff that we make. We, there's this big stainless block inside with windows on it. Yep. Right there, we made that all from a big piece of round stainless. So what it does is it, uh, it shoots light in. It bounces off all these different mirrors. And they can either test how that light goes through the sample or they can test its reflectance. And that'll tell them the information they need to know about what it is they're looking at. Is it common that once something like this is complete, they kind of look at it and say, oh, can we make like a, a little adjustment? Could you make this part bigger, can you make this part smaller? Yeah. It's kind of ongoing, customized. Yeah, so this project, uh, this is the one we've been working on for probably six months now. Um, and uh, it has gone through, even as we're building it, you know, subtle changes here and there. Right. And chances are, um, He'll get it running and you know the professor will say, well, I need a new mirror holder for this. Or two years down the road, they want to change something just a little bit. And we do that kind of stuff all the time. All right, so Ryan, I just want to thank you for uh, showing us around the, the shops today and for you know sharing this with us. This is some pretty crazy work that's going on at Brock that we had no idea was here. So thanks a lot for showing us. Well, thank you very much for coming down. Take care. Stay tuned for more episodes of Behind Closed Doors. One cool thing we've done in here is uh, on that bandsaw, we were able to cut dry ice one time. Oh, really? Yeah, that was neat. I think it was a lab instructor came to us and said, I need you to cut this and drill a hole in it. It cuts like like plastic. Yeah. It cuts really well. You wouldn't think it would. Yeah. So that's sort of where we take our skills from working with other things and we apply to a new. Right. We have no experience with like dry ice. How are we going to do this? Well, it seems like you guys are pretty much prepared to handle whatever anyone throws at you. Yeah, there's part. almost nothing that we can't make.